In extraordinary sessions this morning, the Government and Budget Committee is studying draft Ordinance 037 of 2021, which seeks the approval of the Assembly to an addition of capital resources and expenditures of the Department in fiscal year 2021. During the session led by the chairman of the Joint Committee, Osvaldo Garcia, the Secretary of Government, Cayenne Howard, and the manager of the Departmental State Social Enterprise, Maria Claudia Bracho, who lead the departments that are requiring such resources, were summoned. This was stated by Garcia. La Comisión Conjunta está... The Joint Commission is asking for some requirements and inputs to the administration to deliberate later in the plenary. This committee is very important because the second debate depends on this. So, at this moment, we are studying the important project. The addition includes, on the one hand, the approval of resources for action plans in the islands on risk management unit issues, as well as from the health department to improve health services in the hospital center. We are requesting to the Honorable Assembly the approval of 8,800 million pesos for the design and implementation of an early warning system for the prevention of weather events throughout the island department. This is an ambitious and vitally important project for the community as it consists of different phases and different aspects which will allow us to prevent loss of life in situations or adverse weather events. Also, the protection of infrastructure to predict or identify these natural phenomena with sufficient time in advance. According to the Secretary, in part, the approval of this project will benefit the Department by protecting human life. The Ministry of Transportation delivered a report of the works that are being developed and are about to carry it out in the Department of San Andres. The Minister of Transportation, Angela Maria Orozco, who was visiting the archipelago, announced that by 2022, the tender for the expansion of San Andres Airport is expected to be issued, and also announced the work being carried out by her portfolio to improve the current conditions of the Gustavo Rojas Pinilla International Airport in conjunction with the civil aeronautics. I want to emphasize that we expect to go out to tender for the private initiative that will allow us to grant a concession for the expansion, operation and maintenance of the San Andres Airport, including the one for Old Providence in January. We expect to be awarding the contract during the first half of the year 2022. We have been making investments with civil aeronautics for more than 18 months, not only to change the chairs, change the ceiling, paint the entire airport, but also to enable new sink and toilet units and two scanners, as well as the two conveyor belts. It is expected that by March of 2022, the new escalators from the Gustavo Rojas Pinilla Airport will arrive on the island. The Ministry of Transportation had intervened 73 air conditioners of the airport, are, and it is expected that this week the air in room 3, which is the only one missing, will be installed. The head of the transportation portfolio indicated that there are plans to intervene the departmental government some territory roads on the island. We have some agreements with INVIAS and the governor's office for the development of some tertiary roads in the department. The execution of these are the largest projects we have as ministry. With these words, the national government seeks to contribute to the quality improvement of the infrastructure that is the service of the insular community as well as visitors. Three individuals were arrested over the weekend for the crimes of manufacturing, trafficking and carrying firearms or ammunition, receiving stolen goods and by court other for the crime of aggravated assault. Thanks to the police controls on the island and in order to counteract any type of crime that may endanger the tranquility and security of the inhabitants of the archipelago, three arrests were made by the institution. One of the events took place in the fifth corner sector where a 22-year-old citizen was captured in flagrante delicto for the crime of manufacturing, trafficking, carrying or possessing of firearms, accessories, parts or ammunition, who was found to be in possession of a pistol-type firearm. So supplier and six 9mm cartridges for the same without presenting a permit to carry or possess it and was immediately placed at the disposal of the Attorney General's Office of the Nation. In another police operation, a 19-year-old citizen was caught in flagrante delicto in the San Luis sector for the crime of receiving stolen goods, who was riding a motorcycle with a stolen record and was placed at the disposal of the Attorney General's Office of the Nation. 
on the Cinco Valar Avenue in the vicinity of the Pesinita sector. An arrest warrant was issued by the competent judicial authority for a 27-year-old citizen for the crime of aggravated assault alleged facts that occurred on August 22nd of this present year, and his place at the disposal of the Attorney General's Office of the Nation. After these captures, the police colonel stated, once again, we are complying with our residents of San Andres by ensuring security coexistence and peace this Christmas throughout the territory of our island. The institution remains committed to protecting the life of the inhabitants of the island territory. In other news, several properties in the department will be destined and adapted to be nurseries that will help preserve the environment. During his official visit to the archipelago, the Minister of Environment visits some land that will be used for the construction of nurseries on the island. This news agency spoke with the Deputy Director of Environmental Quality and Management, Diana Mitchell, who told us about this process. As part of the actions being carried out in the National Environmental System, the Ministry of Environment, Coralina, and other institutions that are part of it are coordinating a process of construction of nurseries with a focus on issues of repair and restoration of the islands. Consequently, this is part of the goal of 180 million trees, as well as the ecological restoration process that is being implemented. A total of four nurseries are being built, two in San Andres and two in Old Providence, which will be allocated, one for mangrove propagation, another for dry forest species, and another for fruit trees, or for use in backyards or community orchards that can later be used for food security issues. Uh, how these plots were chosen and the deputy director says. Basically, the first choice is that they are public lands. In the case of San Andres, one will be in Sopesa. This property belongs to the department. The other will be in the Old Point sector in Old Providence. One will be at the headquarters of the corporation and the other at the farm under the mayor's office administration in Old Providence. It is expected that the process of adequacy of these pieces will begin in January of 2022 and the propagation process will be at the end of the same month. Vaccination days against COVID-19 continue, mainly for third booster doses. COVID vaccination coordinator in San Andreas calls on those who have already completed the specific time to apply their third dose to come forward to receive the booster. If they are adults over 50 years old, it is four months. And if they are young people between 17 and 49 years old, it is six months after their second dose. We also continue to vaccinate young people with both first and second doses. According to the vaccination coordinator, there are limited doses in the department. I take this opportunity to tell you that we are running out of vaccines in the department. At the moment, we don't have Pfizer. We have 200 doses of Sinovac and 100 doses of Moderna. We are vaccinating today until we run out of stock and more vaccines are brought from the ministry again for the department. Finally, she referred to the application or combination of vaccines from different manufacturers. At the moment, we are not using this type of interchangeability for second doses. Interchangeability is recommended only for booster doses and we are using the AstraZeneca vaccine exclusively as a booster. Those are guidelines that have been given at the national level for booster doses. Hello, here are the best sports of the islands. The Titanes of Barranquilla was crowned champions for the fifth time by defeating the Cimarrones Chocó Providence in a grand final of basketball. In the fifth and final game of the championship that provided an excited and close game, in the last quarter, Titanes started blowing away the Cimarrones, taking a lead of more than 20 points. The outstanding work of Hansel Atencia, who with consecutive three-pointers, scored 25 points and together with the Panamanian Ernesto Oglivier, closed a spectacular afternoon to give another victory to Titanes and a Christmas present to the Barranquilla people. The Cimarrones Chocó Providence team adjusted their defense to get between two points, but the offensive production of North American Morrison was not enough to help the Cimarrones score. 
Roque Romario with a sensational afternoon scored 26 points for this team, but it was not enough to lift the Desire Cup of the W Play League of the Colombian Professional Basketball. We spoke with a five-time champion coach, Tomas Diaz, who had this to say. Un saludo a toda la afición basquetera de Colombia, en especial a la gente de San Andrés y Providencia, zona basquetera del país, con buenos protagonistas. A greeting to all the basketball fans of Colombia, especially to the people of San Andres and Old Providence, basketball area of the country with good protagonists. At the national level this year in the Professional Cup, two teams, two teams that battled, that was competitive and left a good impression of what will be the future of basketball on the island. Titanes this year, we were again champion with the blessing of God for the effort made by the directive, for the work done by the boys, for the plan and for some additional things that we have built up and that we always want to be contributing to the Colombian basketball. Well, we are very pleased, very happy about this victory. We know that the islands are on the rise with their basketball. We hope next season they have better luck and that they can continue building upon this foundation. A thousand and one thousand blessings. A worthy final for the Cimarrones Choco Providence team who gave their all, the fans were satisfied but with no taste of the much desired trophy since they had the opportunity against the Titanes of Barranquilla. The overcrowding and integration of children in football is one of the priorities of the Departmental Football League. That is why in the Erwin O'Neill Football Stadium, the awarding of trophies and medals for the players and winning teams of the final matches in various categories of the different official tournament of the league took place. We spoke with the league vice president, Marcos Bent, who told us more about the event. We got the, the whole year, the uh, player, the final for the different tournament where the league uh, lead this year. We got Pony, Pre infantil, infantil, prejuvenil, juvenil y veteranos. The idea is um, deliver the media SM and the trophy where the people or where the team then, then earn that way get to this level for the tournament then. Bent spoke about what will be done regarding the development of island soccer. Well fan this year we are trying to do one of the best year where the league and the football for the island got. Guayaquira in a different neighbor them, especially San Luis, San Pandi Hill. We can carry the, the coach, we can carry the balls, all the tools where the people they need for the little boy they need for them practice football. The idea is make the um, open a space for the young boy and speak in them uh, practice football during this vacation season where I got right now. It is important that parents become part of the training of children in sports in order to raise good persons that will benefit the society as mentioned by Marcos Bent.